knockoff Chinese Doc Martens from a Chinese website and they're $20. So let's cut them in half and see what's inside of them. See if they're any good. And I'll show you the one foolproof way to tell if you're buying the real deal Doc Martens or a cheap Chinese knockoff. We are closing in on 100,000 subscribers. So to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, we're gonna cut apart a pair of Jordans, the Shattered Backboard versions, um, start the Red Wing series, and we're gonna make Toasty Gang shirts. But I need a designer or an artist to help me make the shirt. So if you are interested in doing that, hit me up on Instagram at rose underscore anvil so I can check out your art. And then at the 100,000 subscriber mark, I'll choose a few different artists, have some mock-ups, and we'll have people vote on them and make some shirts of this sweet little angel. And if you're not subscribed, just take a minute and push the subscribe button. YouTube doesn't show you what you're subscribed to anyway, so what's it gonna hurt? And if you're feeling really generous, like, this video and uh, comment on this video. Now let's get to the boots. So I first ordered these boots about four months ago, three months ago. They never showed up, so I ordered another pair. And they finally showed up about two and a half months after I ordered them, and they came in the wrong color, the wrong size. These, even though these say that they're a U.S. men's 12, I erred on the side of caution and ordered 12 instead of a 10 and a half what I usually wear. And these are definitely not 12s. These are really small like compared to the regular Doc Martens that are a size 10 and a half here, you can see that they're about an inch short. And there's some pretty big differences between the regular Doc Martens and, and these knockoffs you can notice right off the bat. But before we go through that, let's talk about knockoffs because I'm not a huge fan of knockoff stuff. I don't think that, I don't think that anyone should really support buying knockoffs because I've had some of my products knocked off, like my camera harness. There's a bunch of knockoff versions of it and it's so annoying because they steal your photos, they steal your name, and they're making money off of your hard work. So PSA, don't buy knockoffs. You're supporting poor, poor uh, working conditions and you're supporting companies that are making a dollar off of other companies' hard work. And a lot of times they're really, really terrible imitations of the real deal. So let's go through some of those things that are different and uh, bad quality. First thing is it didn't come in this box. This is a regular Doc Martin box. These actually are holding the vegan Doc Martin boots that I bought for an upcoming video. So if you want to see a vegan Doc Martin video, consider subscribing. But they didn't come in a box. They came in like a plastic bag thing, but they did have Dr. Martin branded paper around them. That was about it for packaging and they were a little beat up when they got here, but then again, they were $20. Another thing I noticed right off the bat is they're everywhere's branded Doc Martin. So they didn't even try to spell it wrong like a lot of Chinese knockoffs do. Like the tags, a very similar Doc Martin. The sole has the same branding and everything as a regular Doc Martens. And the insert has Doc Martin branded on it. One, another thing I noticed right off the bat was that the tongue is made of two parts instead of just the one single piece like the regular Doc Martens. With these, it for some reason cuts right there and you have an extra piece added on. And speaking of leather, this is really poor quality leather. It's not a full grain or top grain, it's made from the splits. There's no grain in this leather at all. They just put a really heavy layer of plastic and dye and paint on top to make it look nicer but it's just a chrome tan that was never re-tanned. It's just split and covered with plastic and dyes. So really poor leather. It won't last nearly as long as the Doc Martens. Doc Martens aren't great leather quality, but they are at least made from the top portion of the hide where the grain is. So you're gonna have a lot stronger, longer lasting leather with the real deals compared to these cheapos. Also, just the general quality of these, you can tell are pretty poor right off the bat. Like the stitch lengths are all different lengths and they're kind of wonky and there's a lot of loose threads and like this Goodyear welt looking stitch on the sole here just doesn't look nearly as finished. And it's not to say that everything made in China is poor quality because you can get really good stuff from China. So those, those of you who've been attacking me in the comments section saying I throw shade at China nonstop, I'm not saying everything made in China sucks. Just cheap Chinese stuff sucks, just like cheap American made stuff sucks. But the overall quality of these, you can just tell right off the bat that they're pretty poor quality. Just not very precise in the uh, construction of them. 
Oh, and my favorite thing is that even though I bought these from a Chinese website, and even though we all know they're from China, the tag says made in England. Bonus points for trying to fool us. I thought that was a nice touch. So those are some of the things that I noticed right off the bat with these, but to really get a feel for how good or bad quality they are, we need to cut them in half to see how they're actually constructed and see what's going on on the inside, because that's where the real quality of the boot lies, is in the inside of the boot, aside from this really cheap split leather. So let's cut these in half. This was by far the easiest boot I've ever cut in half. It took me like a minute. So let's see what's inside. So not a whole lot in here. You know, the insole is just a really thin, basically useless piece of fiberboard. There's really no structure to it. And it's already all bent up and I didn't do this when I was cutting it. It looks like it was just the wrong size and was squished in or maybe damaged in shipping. And they do have a little pad for the ball of the foot, but it's a lot thinner than the regular Doc Martens. And I don't know, it doesn't look like it's Goodyear welted at all. I think it might be a combination of a cemented construction and a Goodyear welt, but I'm not really sure. We'll have to kind of tear it apart more and see what's really going on. But initial impression of it being cut in half is it really is a pretty poor imitation of Doc Martens. Because if you look at the, the two of these side by side, first off, we know that this is just a cheap, oh, sorry. <laughs> we know this is just a cheap uh, blue tanned leather that just has paint over top of it. It's from the splits. This is a higher quality leather. But then we get to the sole, and this is where it really shows a difference. The only thing that's similar is the actual sole itself. But on the Doc Martens, you've got the insert, which is a lot thicker than this one. The insole is an actual fiberboard, like a Texan fiberboard, which will hold its structure and conform to your foot over time. And then you've got another layer of thicker foam for the midsole, and then a big pad for the ball of your foot, and then the actual outsole. Versus this one, you've just got that really thin, basically useless in insole, tiny pad for the ball of the foot, and then the outsole, and that's it. So this boot's gonna be super uncomfortable. You'll start to feel it, the ridges here on the heel of your foot within a day. I wish these were my size, because I wanted to really wear them and see how comfortable they are. But let's get the rest of it torn apart and see what else is going on inside of here. So it is cemented 
but also the stitch goes through this welt and into the inside of the boot. So I think technically it would be considered a Blake stitch, but it's not a very strong construction. I was, it was pretty easy for me to tear apart. It's just pretty inaccurate with how it's glued together and how it's stitched together. So this would probably only last a few weeks of wear before it started coming undone because the part that it was cemented, there's not a whole lot of surface area for the glue to stick to. And because they glued this cheap leather that's split and then has a really heavy layer of stuff on top, when they glued it, all that stuff is just glued to the, the uh, welt here. So when you start put, pulling pressure on it, you're not actually pulling the leather away from the, the glue, you're pulling this cheap finish away from the glue. So it came unstuck really easy and you can really see how thick that finish is once I got this torn apart. And then you can see like the blued split leather underneath. But as for the rest of it, you know, it's just pretty poor quality. You get what you pay for, especially with knockoff stuff. And this outsole is definitely a single piece, unlike the Doc Martens where there's the welt piece and then the sole and they heat seal this together. This is definitely just a solid piece. There's no seam in there anywhere. So I'm not like, I'm not a huge fan of Doc Martens, but they are a lot better quality than these knockoff Doc Martens. You know, you might pay $100, $120 for these, but you're way better off by spending the extra money to buy a real pair of Doc Martens than a cheap knockoff. You'll regret buying these if you get the right color, if they come at all, and if they're the right size. So what's the one thing, the foolproof way to tell if a Doc Martens a knockoff or the real deal? So Doc Martin has this lock stitching that's kind of their signature construction aspect of their boot. You see how this stitch has little loops in it? This is a special type of stitch that helps prevent the whole boot from coming undone if one of these pop, one of these stitches pop. And if you're looking at a pair of Doc Martens that are used or you're a little worried that they might be a knockoff, just ask them to send you a photo of the inside of the boot right here where the vamp is stitched with the three lines of stitching. You can usually tell from the outside, but for sure you can tell on the inside because if it looks like this, a regular stitch where you just see rows of stitching, it's not a real Doc Martin. But if you see one that has this real looping stitch that has like the little hooks all the way through almost, that's a good sign that it's gonna be a Doc Martin, a real Dr. Martin boot. Like even on the old ones, like the uh, vintage Doc Martens that we tore apart, these have that stitch as well. So even the vintage ones you'll be able to tell. And that's the one foolproof way to tell if a pair of Doc Martens you're looking at are real or not. So that pretty much wraps it up. Obviously they're really poor quality. You get what you pay for, it's $20, you get $20 worth of a boot. If you pay for $100, you hope that you get $100 worth of boot. You might be thinking like, I can't afford a $120 pair of boots, I can only afford a $20 pair. Don't buy these, you'll regret it. Don't support knockoff brands. There's ways to find cheaper Doc Martens. You can get them on eBay for cheap. Um, used ones, you can go to, to like outlet stores online that have tons of cheap ones. I've seen them for $60, $50 in that price range. So just look around. You can find a decent pair of Docs for pretty cheap. And most of the time, you've got a friend that's got a pair of Docs that they never wear. So just ask around. And if you guys like this video of comparing like the Chinese knockoffs, let me know because I thought this was really interesting and hopefully you guys too. And if you do like it, let me know and like and subscribe and comment and all the other things because I really appreciate your guys' support and I need your support. Not as much on a $20 pair of boots, but when we're doing the $500 pair, $500 pair of RM Williams, I need your guys' support. See ya. It's a cheap. Oh.